We're now going to move on to special segments in a circle. When we're talking about special segments, it's not so much that they're created specially, but that they have special properties in a circle. You're going to notice that these look really similar to the, what we've just been studying in the last couple of sections, but the difference here is now we're talking about the lengths of the segments and not the measurements of the angles. Previously, we were talking about the angles. Now we're going to talk about segment length. So you'll notice in each of these pictures, we have, in the picture on the left-hand side here, we have two secants. In the picture in the top right, we have two secants. In the picture on the bottom right, we have a secant and a tangent. Hopefully, you can start to identify these as well as I just did. Our first picture here has the segment 4 and 3 in red and blue and the segment 2 and 6 in green and purple. The property that they hold is if I take the red segment times the blue, so in other words the segment that the chord or the secant line that goes across the circle here, the chord, the two pieces of that multiplied together equals the other two pieces of the other chord on the other side. So we have 4 times 3 equals 2 times 6. Next we're going to move on to the picture in the top right. You notice we have the segment C to A, which would be a total of 8, because 5 plus 3 is 8. And then the segment BC is 5. Then if I go from C to E, the, so the total there is 10, and C to D is 4. That's the picture that I'm now talking about. As we look at that one, the property is AC, the long segment, times BC, the short segment, is equal to CE, the long segment, times CD, the short segment. You'll often hear me talk about long times short equals long times short in this type of a picture. So you may want to write that down in your notes, long times short equals long times short for two secant segments. Our last picture here has a tangent line. It's actually kind of a tangent segment, C to D, and a secant segment, we'll call it, which goes C to A. The property there is AC, the long segment, times BC, the shorter segment, is equal to the tangent segment times itself. So CD times CD equals CA times CB. Long times short equals long times long. That's the end of the formula part of this. It's pretty sh short and pretty quick. Now we're going to actually try and use it. The key here is to identify what type of a situation do you have. Do you have the two secants where there are just two lines inside the circle that meet in the circle? Do we have the two secants that meet outside the circle? Or do we have the tangent and secant that meet outside the circle? Now notice I'm using a pretty liberal use of the word secant and tangent because truly enough secant and tangent are lines that go forever. And in this case, they're actually segments that we can measure. So I'm us using a, a, a liberal definition of what we're actually talking about with these, but I think you understand what we're doing. So the key here is to look at the picture and look at what we have. We have two secants meeting outside the circle. That's the s situation where I do long times short equals long times short. What I mean by that is the long segment e to g is 34 times the short segment from e to f which is 10. So 34 times 10 equals the long segment which would be 8 plus x parenthesis times the shorter segment of 8. So there's our situation. Now we just need to solve it. But again, the key to doing this was understanding what formula or what process we're going to use for this. So now we just end up with 340 equals 64 plus 8x. Solving that shouldn't be too hard, hopefully. 
So subtracting the 64 over, we would get 276 equals 8x. Dividing that by 8, you'll get x equals 34.5. Now if we look at our picture, let's see if that makes sense. We're saying that the value of x is 34.5. Well, I think that probably makes sense to me. The outside of e to f is 10, the inside is 24, the outside of e to h is 8, and the inside is 34. That seems like the measurements all pretty much match up with what I would expect to be. Our next question. We have two secants that cross inside the circle. In this situation, we take everything based off of the center. So we have 8, the segment from here to the center, times x, which is from the center to here, equal to 12 times 9. So we have 8x equals 12 times 9, which is 108. Dividing by 8, we get x equals 13.5. Our next example here is probably the most complex one because you're going to have to use a little bit of your algebra. We have a secant and a tangent. Let's start with the tangent. In this situation, we take the tangent line times itself. So we have x plus 4 times x plus 4. That's going to be set equal to, the, on the other seg segment, we take x times the whole segment. Well, the whole segment is x plus x plus 2. So you need to realize here that we're doing the short segment times the whole segment. The short segment, I'm going to erase this, the short segment is x. The whole segment would be the distance from here to here, which would be x plus x plus 2. This may look a little difficult, but let's try and do the algebra and see what happens. As we FOIL out the first part of the expression, I get x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals, well, let, we can simplify this to be 2x plus 2. So we have 2x squared plus 2x. Back in algebra, you learned about quadratic formulas. In quadratic formulas, we like to get them in standard form. Well, as I notice here, I have a couple of x squared, so I want to keep that positive. So I'm going to move my x's over to the right-hand side, or I'm going to move everything over to the right-hand side. So I'm going to subtract an x squared, and I'll end up with 8x plus 16 equals x squared plus 2x. Next, I'm going to move the 8x over. And I get 16 equals x squared minus 6x. And finally, I'm going to move the 16 over. And I get x squared minus 6x minus 16 equals 0. Now, hopefully that's not too much of a challenge. But definitely, if you have a problem with that, come and see me, and I'll help you out. Our next piece here is to factor it. You have some options here. Back in algebra, you learned you could use your calculator to do this. You could do this by factoring. You could even do completing the square if that's easier. There's all kinds of different ways you can do this. Find out the way that works best for you and use that way. I think it's easiest to factor this. x times x is x squared. For 16, I have options. I have 1 and 16. 2 and 8 and 4 and 4. But the 2 and 8 are going to make the 6, so that's what I want to use. I need a negative 6, so I'll put the negative on the 8, positive on the 2. I have it factored. Now to find my two values, if you remember, 
I take x plus 2 equal to 0, which would give me negative 2, x minus 8 equal to 0, which gives me 8. I have two values. It is possible that, one, that both of these would work. It's also possible that one of them doesn't. So let's see, negative 2 and 8. I'm going to jot those down back up here again. x equals negative 2, x equals 8. Well, I can see right away that the negative 2 value is not going to work. We have a problem. If we put negative 2, let's erase some lines here. If we put negative 2 in right there, we now have the distance from the outside point to the circle being a distance of negative 2. That's not possible. So that's what's called in math an extraneous solution. Extraneous solutions are simply solutions we get which we use the correct math and we solved it properly, but we got a number that will not work in the problem. But the 8 does work, so we still have one answer that works. So the answer for this question would be 8. If you have any questions about this or any of the other problems we did in today's homework, make sure to come and ask.